Hello everyone, my name is Tom Dispenza and I've been coloring hair for more than 30 years. It wasn't until I sat with a group of Korean friends that I realized how large the interest was in coloring Korean hair. I learned many salons have trouble achieving light brown and blonde colors without orange. Achieving the color result the client wants when working with Korean hair can be difficult. The difficulty is not the fault of the colorist or the product used. The difficulty is the result of bad information taught to the colorist. This bad information comes from many sources, but primarily it comes from the product manufacturers and other colorists in the salon. Bad hair color comes from not understanding the limitation of products we use and how those products affect the hair. Most Korean hair can be bleached and toned to light blonde or medium blonde or light brown without orange. But not everyone can be the lightest white or platinum blonde. White blonde or platinum blonde are very difficult to achieve on Korean hair and not all Korean hair is the same. Many Koreans have medium or coarse texture hair. The texture of the hair is one of the factors we must take into consideration when formulating and when choosing the products to use. I was given dark brown and black hair that was cut from customers' heads in America and in Korea. There was no difference between them. All of the hair color work you are about to see was done on this hair. I believe Korean levels should be level one black, level two black brown, level three dark brown, level four medium brown, level five light brown. This photo shows the five levels of Korean hair. It is easier to see the levels if you bend the hair over your fingers and compare them to each other. Korean hair can be lightened and toned to blonde shades, but the coarse texture is more difficult to lighten and tone. Korean hair cannot be lightened to blonde in a single process. If you want beautiful blonde without red or orange, the hair must first be bleached to yellow and then toned to the proper color. If you use regular single process color to lighten the hair, it will always look red or orange unless you create a special high lift formula to neutralize as much orange or red as possible. Even with the high lift formula, there will still be some warmth. Here's another way to think about Korean hair. Think of two women with identical hair color, dark brown. The only difference is the texture of the hair. One has finer texture hair and the other has coarse texture hair. The coarse texture has more natural brown color than the finer texture, even though they are the same color. Here's another way to think about texture and natural color. Think of two glasses of milk, one thin glass and one fat glass. Now add chocolate syrup to both glasses until they are the same color brown. You need to add more chocolate syrup to the fat glass. This is the same way Mother Nature makes your hair brown. She adds more natural brown to the coarse hair and less to the fine hair. Therefore, the coarse texture will take longer to lighten than the finer texture hair. Because of the coarse texture and because of the dark natural color, Korean hair can be more difficult to color than most other hair. Most products have been designed for European or American hair. Both American and European hair tend to be finer texture than Korean hair, and both are rarely as dark as Korean hair. Products designed for Korean hair must have more color, 
more lightening and be designed for coarse hair. They should be permanent color, deposit only color, high lift brunettes, powder bleach, cream bleach, and toners. Each one has a specific function for Korean hair. Permanent color is best used for coloring gray or white hair and is best used with 25 volume or 30 volume developer. It is good for clients who want dark brown or red hair. However, lighter permanent shades always turn the brown hair orange. One big mistake colorists make is misjudging the amount of gray hair. If the hair is not 100% white, all of the gray hair will turn orange. High lift brunettes are used when the client has gray hair and wants her natural color to be a little lighter and also wants her white hair to be colored. Deposit only color is used when the client wants only her white hair colored and she wants the color to be lighter than her natural dark brown or black. Powder and cream bleach are used when the client wants her hair to be light brown or blonde with no orange in the hair. After the bleaching, a toner or deposit only color is applied to create the new color. Toners are used after the hair has been bleached, they create the new color. It is important that none of the products contain the chemical ethanolamine. It is also known as MEA. I believe this ingredient is not good for Korean hair. Let's look at each type of coloring product and see the effect on Korean hair. Here is permanent color mixed with 25 volume developer and applied to white hair for 45 minutes. Here is permanent color mixed with 30 volume developer and applied to dark brown Korean hair for 45 minutes. Here are high lift brunettes mixed with 40 volume developer and applied to salt and pepper Korean hair for 45 minutes. Here are deposit only formulas applied to white hair. The formulas have no effect on the dark brown hair. They can only be seen on the white hair. These swatches show the bleaching of Korean hair using XL Super as it progresses over time. Here are swatches of Korean hair that have been bleached two times to lighten to yellow. Here are swatches of Korean hair that have been toned after bleaching. Korean hair is more difficult to bleach than European or American hair. You must make a special bleach mixture for Korean hair. I prefer a combination of powder bleach, cream bleach, and conditioning serum. Here is one of my formulas. 60 grams of XL powder plus 15 grams of XL super plus 3 grams of serum extreme plus 75 grams of 25 volume developer. Steps to bleaching Korean hair. Before you begin the bleaching process, you must cleanse the hair using clarifying shampoo. You cannot use regular sulfate-free shampoo. The cleansing shampoo must contain ammonium lauryl sulfate and tetrasodium EDTA. Cleansing shampoo is also called clarifying shampoo or chelating shampoo. Dampen the hair and then apply the clarifying shampoo. Do not rub the scalp. Leave the shampoo in the hair for three minutes, then rinse the hair. Towel dry the hair. Do not dry the hair completely. It should be slightly damp. Mix the bleach and developer. Starting in the back, below the occipital bone, 
Apply the bleach one eighth of an inch away from the scalp. Do not rub the bleach into the scalp and do not put under a dryer. Why does Korean hair turn orange when using permanent color? There are three main reasons why Korean hair turns orange when it is colored. A. The wrong color and tone were used. Unless the hair is 100% white, you cannot use a blonde shade on Korean hair. When you put a blonde shade on brown Korean hair, it lightens the brown color, but does not have enough tone to block or neutralize the orange that is created by the lightening process. B, the wrong developer was used. The higher the developer, the more orange is created by the lightening process. When coloring only gray hair, the developer should be 20 volume or 25 volume. C, did not take into consideration the texture of the hair when creating the formula. When the hair is coarse texture, like most Korean hair, the colorist must adjust the formula to have a higher concentration of dye. This higher concentration of dye helps to prevent the orange from appearing. Creating ash shades for Korean hair. Blue and blue-green concentrates need to be added to most Korean formulas when lightening dark brown hair. The following two charts give an approximate amount of ash to be added to color formulas. Here's the chart for high lift colors. Here's the chart for gray coverage colors. Just the facts. Korean hair is more difficult to color and bleach than European or American hair because of its coarseness and because of its darkness. Typical color formulas do not work on Korean hair. Color formulas must be adjusted to contain a higher dye concentration. This higher dye concentration gives superior gray coverage. The best permanent colors for Korean hair contain ammonia. Permanent colors for changing the natural color and covering gray work better on Korean hair if they contain ammonia. I believe color products with ethanolamine should not be used on Korean hair. I believe color products that use ethanolamine instead of ammonia will fade faster and show orange undertones. I also believe ethanolamine will damage the hair more than ammonia. Korean hair must be shampooed with chelating shampoo prior to coloring. The chelating process helps better gray coverage, helps to prevent fading, helps to eliminate orange caused by iron in the hair, and helps to keep blondes from looking green caused by copper in the hair. Korean hair must be shampooed with chelating shampoo before and after bleaching. The chelating process helps prevent irritation of the scalp from bleach that gets hot because of pollutants in the hair and helps prepare the hair for a long-lasting blonde toner. To try Chromastics, go to chromastics.com and click on the Try Chromastics tab. I'm Tom Dispenza. I'm proud to be part of Chromastics. Thank you.